muted. Sorry about that. And I hope you're okay with this meeting being recorded. Um, and I think that also means, Tony, am I correct that if anybody sends you a message, Tony, that it will be recorded on the final because you're the host? Yes. So, so if you send me a private message, chat, it will show up. Yeah. If you chat with each other, like if Gustavo the senior wants to tell Booby the freshman to wake up if he falls asleep or something, we won't record that. We don't see the individuals, but if you send a chat to Tony, we will see it. So just be aware of that. So if folks could mute themselves just so that we don't hear too much of the background and we'll, and we'll, we'll call on you when, when we're ready. Um, Jay, did you, Jay, did you say send a check? Sure. You're welcome to send a check. Anybody can do that, Bob. I, I think you've helped enough already, Bob. Um, so we're gonna jump in and say some, just some quick introductions. And because there are folks on the call that, that I have not had a chance to meet, I'll just say, my name is, as you see, Jay Davis. And I have the great pleasure of uh, being able to work with this program since we started at Dartmouth with Bob and Dottie's wonderful um, idea right from the get-go. So. I will sort of moderate as we go through, but I'm gonna have all of you have a chance to um, either you know, just quickly just say who you are and where, where you are at the moment. Um, and I'll go to, to my right-hand person here who is literally on my right on my screen at least, Tony. Oh, hey, uh, I'm the program coordinator for the King Scholarship Program. Um, I, and yeah, it is a pleasure to get to work with all you students and I really, I really miss all of y'all and it's so awesome to see your faces. And where are you sitting right now, Tony? I am currently in Newport, New Hampshire, which is about 45 minutes southeast of Hanover. And I had to tell him to get off his computer last night. He was working on things for this graduation and it was his wife's birthday. So he, he, he was smart though. He cleaned the house before she got home. He gets credit for that. Thank you. Beverly. Hi everyone. Um, I am Beverly Watson, the director of the Global Scholars Program at King Philanthropies. I work with the wonderful Bob and Dottie King and I am really excited to be here and to share in this really important time um, of your graduation ceremony. And I am in California, uh, Mountain View, California. Wonderful. Thanks Beverly. Okay. Great to have you. And Peter. Hello everyone. As Jay said, my name is Peter. Very happy to be here. And I work at the Nike Center at Dartmouth. And I specifically work with the King Scholar Program with Leadership Week and Internships Professional Development. Very happy to be here. Great. And Larissa. Dynamic Jay. <laughs> there she is. Yay. Hi, everyone. Congratulations. It's such an honor to be here with you all today. Um, I'm Larissa Hopkins. I work in the Student Academic Support Services area, supporting Jay and literally all of the students on campus with personal and academic matters. So uh, I feel like I have one of the best jobs at Dartmouth College. Thanks, Larissa, and for all you do. And Kate. Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Burke. I work in Student Affairs and with Gina the Catherine Lively, and as Jay said, I work behind the scenes to support all the good work that our colleagues do um, to support you and your time at Dartmouth. I am sitting in Hanover in my office in Parkhurst at the moment, and um, we congratulate you so much and we wish you were here. Mm -hmm. So true. And what I'd like to do now is, is just have our seniors just really briefly just say who you are, just hello. And then if you have any family or sponsors or friends that you'd like to introduce as well, I'll have the other King Scholars briefly introduce themselves too. But let's start um, in with Caroline and tell us where you are. Yes, I'm Caroline. There she is. Hello. Um, my name is Caroline. I am in Nairobi, Kenya. And I have my team of supporters and friends and mentors. Um, I, have, yep. I have one of my mentors. I can see George Trumbull. He's a Dartmouth alumni as well. An amazing person. And I have Professor Le Lea Morangu, who is an incredibly amazing person in my life. And also, she is the first person, the first professor, I think. She's quite accomplished and... Um, honored to be able to walk in on our shoes and she's the first female vice chancellor in Kenya and I'm honored to be mentored by her. I also have my other mentor Judy Kaur 
And she is also an incredible person that has worked with me through the journey at Dartmouth. And I think that's all. A couple of them will be joining later. <laughs> that's great. But I don't think they're yet there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Wonderful. Anala. Hi, everyone. I'm Anala. I'm a senior student at Dartmouth College, and I'm so honored to be a King Scholar. I'm currently in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and here with me is the most important woman in my life, my mom. <laughs> Hello. And what is your name, mom? <laughs> my name is Amela. So, so Amela. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> many know that Anela did lots of research when she was in high school that involved chicken feathers. So one of the first things her mother said to me when I got to meet her through something like this years ago was chicken feathers really smell. So <laughs> I will remember that. <laughs> Wonderful to have you. Abby. Hi, my name is Abby. Um, like Anela and Caroline, I'm also a senior at Dartmouth College. Uh, well, not anymore. <laughs> And with me, I have my mother on WhatsApp, where I'm not sure you can see, but she's here. I also have uh, my friend Jonathan, who just said hello to me privately. <laughs> and Nadani, um, I think you guys can see her, uh, one of my best friends here in Jamaica. Also, I'm at home. Uh, you'll probably see my father join me soon, and also another friend of mine, because... We're going to take graduation pictures immediately after this. Uh, so, yeah. That's great. Thank you very much, Abby. Gustavo. And I have to go on the other screen to find him. There he is. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my, my computer turned off by itself magically, and I, I, I missed the prompt. It's just like, say hi. Just, just to, yep, your name and where you're sitting, and, and then if people have family here, they're introducing them. Uh, okay, great. So, hi, everybody. I'm Gustavo, and I'm in Hanover uh, right now. And I don't have any family uh, with me, but, you know, I feel like uh, being with family, being with so many of you, so wonderful to uh, have you guys here. It's wonderful to be with everybody. Thanks, Gustavo. And Linford. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Linford. Uh, I'm a senior as well. I guess a senior, senior. Uh, and um, I'm in Harare, Zimbabwe right now. I'm on my own, uh, so no family. But like Gustavo said, oh, I almost cried. Um, you guys are family, so yeah. Yeah. And is your, is your mother not able to be with us? Uh, yeah, so I'm not home right now. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of moving around there. I had, I had the opportunity with Tony to meet her a couple of weeks ago through this, which is really wonderful. So, great. And maybe now we could um, go, and, I, and again, I, we have two screens going, so I apologize if I miss anybody, but we'll just have our, our undergraduates um, could say hello and where you're sitting would be great. So let's go with Dari. Um, hi, I am Dari. Um, I am a 23, and currently I'm in my dorm. Um, I am planning to like move out. So it's almost like an empty door. <laughs> and maybe you can say where your home is as well. All oh, right. Um, I'm from Cambodia. Wonderful. Thank you. Chio. Hello, everyone. I'm Chio. I'm a 23 as well. And right now I'm back home in Cusco, Peru. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Mubi. Hello everyone, my name is Mubarak or Mubi. I'm in my dorm room in Hanover now and I'm from Nigeria. Yeah. Yasu. Hey everyone, my name is Yasu and I'm, I'm also at 23 and I'm also in my dorm room in, in Hanover. My home is in Tokyo. Thank you. Juliana. Hi, I'm a 22 and I'm in my home in Brazil now. Thanks. Daniel. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm a, I'm a 22 as well. I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I'm in Hanover, New Hampshire right now. Thank you. Great. And my son is apologizing for using the coffee machine in the background. Um, thank you, Daniel. 
and Akwesi. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Akwesi. I'm a 21 from Ghana, and I'm currently in Hanover, sitting in um, the back part of the library. Great. Thank you. And Sira. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sira. I was actually a part of the class of 20, but I decided to take some time away. So I will uh, probably be graduating with the 23s, and I'm excited to meet all of you when I come back. But it's uh, really nice to be here, and I'm really excited for, my, uh, for some of my best friends um, uh, to be graduating. So congratulations, and thank you, Jay, for organizing this. It's also really nice to see everybody who supported um, everybody here. Yeah. Hope that wasn't too much to, to, to No, it was great. Thank you so much, Jirat. <laughs> and we will get to see you with those groups and a lot of the photos in our slideshow coming up, which will be great oh, fun. Exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Patrick. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Patrick Radukunda. I'm a 19. I don't know if you can hear me. It's raining here. Um, yes. Okay, um, I'm in Kigali right now. I'm at home. Uh, I'm part of the class of 19, but I'm on a time off to be graduating later. Um, and uh, congratulations to everyone who's graduating. Happy to be here. Wonderful to see you, Patrick. And let me see now if I go through, I switch the screen. Is there anybody that I've missed? I think that might be everybody. Tony, if you see anybody I've missed, anybody who'd like to introduce himself that I didn't call on? Did we get Juliet? Oh, Juliet, thank you. Oh yeah, you just never named there, so I, there it is. Hi, Juliet. Hi, everyone, and I'm from Rwanda, but right now I'm in North Carolina with my sister. Yeah, nice. good to see you all. One of six sisters, is that right? Yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> and the youngest too. So she has a lot of people to look up to and also to be nagged by. So great. Well, we are so delighted to have you all here. It's just, it's a wonderful thing. And we have a, a word from our sponsors to begin with. And um, this, this will be a, a highlight of the ceremony. Tony, take it away. Thank you. Hey, Dartmouth King scholars, do you know that we've been told we are part of the silent generation? Well, we decided we don't want to be the silent generation. We want to be the TikTok generation. And you know what? We are very sorry. We are not going to be walking with you this weekend, but we know we are walking far together and we love you very much. Oh, hit, hit, go. Hit, go. Here we go. Here we go. So I would like to wish great wishes to Caroline, to Abigail, and Amala. I am so proud of you. And you know what? Gustavo and Linford. I want to say congratulations to you. And you know what? Chanel wants to say congratulations too. And here's to your graduation. <laughs> I love you all. Bye bye. <laughs> Bravo. It, it's important to have a certain gravity and seriousness to these ceremonies. So thank you, Bob and Dottie. Uh, that was just delightful. And for those of you who don't know Bob and Dottie, that captures pretty well their sense of humor and engagement and willingness to keep things light, even as they pursue some of the most serious objectives there could be. So that's a perfect beginning. Um, and now we have someone who was not part of our program when, when these seniors were first years. And it's so delightful to have her with us now um, on so many levels. Um, and Beverly is gonna um, say some words to you all. Thanks, Beverly. Yay. Well, first of all, Bob and Dottie, I love that uh, uh, presentation. It really does capture well the heart and the humor 
Um, it is my honor and pleasure just to share a few words uh, to the Dartmouth King Scholar class of 2020. <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> Um, on behalf of Bob and Dottie and the entire King Philanthropies family, um, we just want to share our pride and excitement um, as you in, uh, cross this important threshold. Um, as I thought about the message that I wanted to share today, um, I thought about three wishes um, for each of you. And so I wanted to share that now. Um, so for Abby, Gustavo, Linford, uh, Anila, and Carolyn. I want you to, um, my wish is that you always remember who you are. And when you think about who you are, um, I think about the family and the people and community that brought you to the place where you are today. When you started Dartmouth four or five years ago, um, what brought you here? was your determination and your hard work, creativity, the audacity, and the courage. And really, those characteristics are what brought you here, as well as the support of your family. Um, they pushed you, believed you, recognized uh, that you can do this. Um, they believed and surrounded your vision. And when you arrived to Dartmouth four or five years ago, you also encountered a new family as Gustavo and Lindford said, it's the King Scholar family. And we are so excited um, to have you, your cohort of fellow dreamers uh, who believed in you and strived with you in making this world a better place for all of us, a world where you'll create uh, solutions to make a meaningful difference. And on the cusp of your graduation, you're ready to join another family the family of King Scholar alums. And we are so excited that you will join your experiences um, and perspectives uh, along with these other alums. It's the beginning of a small um, network, but we all are united in the same thing in dedicating your lives to create the solutions that will improve uh, the lives of the world's poor. And so I want you to remember this family that you are a part of um, as you go across this journey. My second wish is for, for you, for the five of you, is that you always know that you are enough. You have the power, the resourcefulness and creativity, drive and brilliance to confront some of the world's strongest and, and toughest problems. And given where we are today, this is not um, a small feat. Uh, we face climate change, food insecurity, poverty, um, faltering education system, but we also stand here today in the midst of a global pandemic. And we also face a lot of violence, the police violence um, in the US and around the world uh, against um, people of color, uh, against black people, but I know that you are the leaders that we need, the leaders that can unite us and help us think differently on how we can navigate uh, these cultural shifts. And in each one of you, um, I see, uh, I look around and I see that you have what it takes. And when I say you are enough, you have the intellectual IQ, intellectual quotient, you have the EQ, emotional quotient, and the AQ, the app adaptability quotient and you give me hope and you give us hope for the future and then my third wish for you is that you remember that we are stronger together and though each of you individually had the power to solve these big problems we are inexplicably stronger together um, what I've been so excited about is learning about the vision of impact each of you shared with me, whether it be about energy, uh, uh, um, bringing renewable energy or bringing voice to the voiceless, or whether it be about encouraging gender equality, um, or whether it be about helping emerging leaders. 
that this vision of impact that you have, you will continue to hone and to build as you move forward in graduate work or in, in work. And the opportunity that you now have is how will you leverage not only your knowledge, but your network and your community to make this vision, this vision of impact you have a reality. Um, you think about your various families, whether the family that you grew up with, the legacy that you have, our Dartmouth family here, the family of your other global scholars. And how will you leverage this legacy that you inherited and pass it on? And what perhaps are aspects of your legacy that you might change? Um, and I come here um, and I'm so excited to be here today because I also recognize that I come from a legacy. Um, I think about the legacy that my parents left me and it inspires me. Um, I am the daughter of a woman who was born in the segregated South, um, who decided to reach beyond her borders uh, so that she could go to teach in Southern Africa in Angola and teach teachers how to teach. Um, she also was a director of a scholarship program, uh, very much like this, that uh, provided uh, scholarships to grad students, uh, African grad students to study in the US and the UK. Um, and many of those same students now are government leaders um, in the public health, um, in academics and business. I'm, I'm also though the daughter of a Jamaican immigrant um, who taught us to love history um, and to approach life creatively, um, creatively and looking beyond what may be obvious. And so I tell you that because I am the, um, I examine the own legacy of my parents and of my family and of my people as I ask you to do. And I choose to grab hold um, with determination and passion for education um, and empowering others to dream beyond what we can see. And so in closing, as, as you approach this momentous occasion, I encourage each one of you to grab hold of your dreams and the legacy you hope to build. Understand that we as your King Scholar family, the Dartmouth colleagues, Bob and Dottie, that we stand beside you, believing not only in your power to dream, but to, but, but to build a legacy that literally can change the world. And we look forward to your active participation in the Global Scholars um, alum. You join, you five will join the six, that we have a network of 11 alums that will continue to grow and together, as a family, as a beautiful family, we have the power to change the world. Congratulations, class of 2020. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Beverly. It wonderfully said, and it's just been such a, 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 a huge bonus for us to have you as part of the program. And, and it's the, some of the, uh, the sophomores and juniors will remember you as our wonderful host out in San Francisco last year, along with Bob and Dottie. So, um, so thank you. And, and now we're going to move. And I, and I would like just to welcome a couple of our guests that have come in. We're delighted to have you, including Louis Morera, who is, a, I guess, now a senior. He's, a, he's just finished his junior year um, from Zimbabwe. We're delighted you're with us, Louis. And I know you're in Hanover at the moment. Um, and we're going to do our memory slideshow right now, which will bring you back. Um, it will show you a lot of a lot of things, including Gustavo's hairstyle changes. Um, and Tony has done incredible work putting it together. So take it away, Tony. All of our time outside all day Doing whatever we like our way Didn't need a wall to build a new space 
Every moment just came together like two feet Hanging in the water, a few trees Stood a little taller, new breeze Feels so good, can't help but remind me That it was a good day but just stay around Yeah, it was a good day I'm so glad the sun stayed around Yeah, it was a good day Not much to do but just stay around Yeah, it was a good day I'm so glad the sun stayed around No more school Wonderful. Thank you, Tony. And Thank such you. memories there. I, one of the things we hoped was that for some of the family members or friends who might not know all of the stories that they, that might prompt some questions. <clears throat> Why were you standing on a beach? What, where was that? It was Maine. Um, you know, what were you doing in New York? What happened there? Why it looks like a ropes course. What were you doing? Those, those sorts of memories. Um, there's lots to be told there. So um, we hope that that inspires some good conversation after this. Um, and again, thanks so much to Tony for all his work pulling those pieces together. Um, I'm really delighted now to have a, a relatively new member to our group. He's been with us for just about a year now. Um, Peter Jenkinson from the Dickey Center, which is a really important campus partner. We have three broad um, wings of what we do. Of course, our central program and then the admissions office, who we work so closely with to get amazing folks like you have here and then um, the Dickey Center for Leadership. And so Peter's just gonna talk on behalf of them. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Jay. And uh, wow, Tony, that was an amazing video and just made me so happy. So amazing. Also, Bob and Dottie, that video that you made was truly inspiring and has inspired me to up my congratulations game for next time. Um, so maybe next time you'll see a video from the Dickey Center. Um, speaking of inspiration now, um, we're here to celebrate the graduating class of the seniors of the King Scholars. And I just want to say on behalf of the Dickey Center, my colleague Amy Newcomb, and previously Ken Bauer, um, who used to work with the King Scholar program, that we are all so, so happy for you and a huge, huge congratulations. Um, we are all inspired to work with you on a daily basis. And it is truly an honor to see you every day, see you grow um, as individuals. And we have no doubt that you will succeed um, greatly in your years to come. So thank you very much. And it is a pleasure to know you. And I look forward to seeing you and hearing about your accomplishments in the future. Thank you, Peter. And the undergraduates on the call are gonna have much opportunity to work with Peter in the years to come with their internships, et cetera. So it's great. And he's been particularly helpful. I just wanna make a call, uh, shout out um, in this time of COVID and so many internships being canceled and trying to find remote internships and just the kind of flexibility and um, ability to be thinking on his feet. We really appreciate it, Peter. Um, and then I'm delighted to, to sort of turn the mic over to Tony, um, who has been so deeply involved with certainly the 23s and, and 22s have had Tony from their beginning. Um, and for the 20s, they've had the opportunity to have him this last two years. Um, and Tony is, is one of the most important pieces of sort of glue that holds all of us together. So Tony, take it away. Hey, y'all. Um, I, uh, I usually don't say a ton uh, in speeches or whatnot, but um, y'all have been um, so significant uh, in my time uh, so far working with King Scholarships. Um, even before I started, um, and I'm literally gonna cry, but um, just, you've been so great. Um, each of you are so intrinsically yourselves, like unique and beautiful in your own ways. And you always, um, I've seen each of you fight for what you believe in, in your own way. Um, each of you are so strong and passionate, and um, it, it's just honestly such a pleasure uh, to know you and to talk about you to other people and to like brag about um, what you've done and who you are. Um, and I, I know each of you in your future will be amazing leaders and advocates and uh, friends 
um, you're all so accomplished in what you do and so amazing academically. Um, but the, the part that always smacks me is how humble each of you are in your amazing work. Um, it's like, you know, I, like I say, I, I literally brag about all of you all the time. Um, and just, I have never, I feel like I have to brag because you all would not bring up your accomplishments if it were not for other people, just because of how humble you are. Um, so I really just want to say thank you for being a part of the program and being great leaders in the program and, um, you know, being awesome role models for our King Scholars that are coming in and the younger generation and um, setting an amazing um, road for the future. Um, like I said, I'm so proud of you all and I'm thankful to have known you and congratulations, you've earned this. Thank you. And thanks to those words, Tony and everyone, just a big thank you to Tony and to Jackie Bruy as well, who couldn't be here, but many of you remember Jackie and her work, but Tony, thank you. Your heart is always what you lead with. Um, we are going to focus now, as it says in the program, our spotlight on our seniors. And so what we're going to do is just have a, a slide come up about each senior. And I've asked them to think about three prompts ahead of time, which was just one particular memory from their time with the King Scholars. Um, could be fun, could be transformative, whatever they'd like it to be. One way in which the King Scholarship Program has um, affected their trajectory, and I know that there's so many ways for all of them, but just one way that it has changed the way that they think about where they are going. And then to finish, just with telling us what they know about next year and, and sort of the plans to come, okay? So um, we'll start right in with, I believe, yes, it's with Anna, we went alphabetically, um, and, and we'll have Anna speak, and then um, I just have a few words to say about each of the students as well. So Anna. Hi everyone. Um, again, what an honor to be here today as a King Scholar. Um, so one of the most, there have been so many memorable things when it comes to me being a part of the King Scholar family, but one of the most memorable moments for me was uh, the morning uh, when we were supposed to set off uh, for Thanksgiving to Bob Sandati's house in Maine. Um, all of us received such warm hugs from Jackie at that time and from Jay just after our first um, final sever. So that was really, really nice to have that familial feeling. Uh, and then after a few hours of writing, we came to Bob's and Dottie's house and then they received us with their warm hugs. And that was so important for me, given that that was the first time I was away from my family for that long time from my, from, uh, from my mom. So that was one of the most memorable memories for me. Um, when it comes to King Scholar's program being so important in my, in my development, um, I have to say, first of all, the entire program has given us so many opportunities and I'm so grateful for them. Uh, one thing I remember very much was, again, during Thanksgiving, we were going to um, the Portland Museum of Arts and Bob was sitting with me um, on the coach and was telling me how if I was to affect the world in my way uh, through what I'm interested in, is that I need to look for spaces and real world problems uh, to change them. I need to be thinking in this change conception way. Um, and that was really important to me. Also just Dartmouth has generally been a nourishing place for me, alma mater, the nourishing mother. And being a King Scholar who was able to go on a leadership week where I was able to go to the World Bank and later on end up with an internship at such an big and important organization in my educational development has been so, so important for me. When it comes to my plans, um, during the summer, I'm going to be working as a climate ambassador for the Kenneth Bugbert Climate Initiative. Um, and that is an initiative that Bob and Dottie are supporting. We are, we are going to be uh, working on bringing climate change issues closer to youth so that they can bring it closer to adults and policymakers maybe. Um, and after that, I'm joining Stanford's PhD program in environment and resources as a Knight Hennessy scholar. So I'm joining another terrific family, which I'm very excited to be a part of. Thank you so much, everyone. 
Wonderful, Anna. Thank you so much. And you just exemplified one of the things I love about you is, is how much your public speaking has grown and developed and how confident, whether you feel it or not, you should be because you're amazing. Um, and just a, some pieces around the edges. So folks who don't know her as well know that she majored in environmental studies um, with a minor in international studies. And some of her internships have just been so interesting and, and far flung, whether she was in Japan doing research there, working with the World Bank in Bosnia, right on campus, but doing, you know, graduate level research, um, really cutting edge, you know, she would every now and then, the, the humility that Tony talks about, you'd I'd get her to talk more about it. She says, yeah, I think we might be able to publish something about this. And um, there's just a lot of really, um, I think, transformative work she's been doing. Um, but as I will do for each of the scholars, I just want to talk just briefly about their character and sort of who they are. And I will, I will certainly remember your humility, Anala, um, and also your grace, you know, and the ability to, to manage so many different things, to have your laboratory, which is your focus as it had to be, you're keeping things alive there, yet also managed to be able to be a flautist um, for the, the Dartmouth Chamber Society. Um, and just your powerfully focused commitment um, is it just, it's so hard to balance so many things and to keep your commitment to really how I think you're gonna change the world, which is the, the world's use of energy. And that there are so few things I can think of that are as important as that right now. Um, and I think not insignificantly, you will be also an incredibly important voice as a woman scientist. And that is something that uh, is still hard, I think, for many people. And, and it shouldn't be, of course. And you are going to continue with others to change people's perceptions of, of science and of the ways to change the world. So we are so proud of you. And we, are, of course, are so proud of your mother for the work she did to make you. She's the one who should really be getting this degree. But um, we are, we're so thankful you've been part of our program. And we cannot wait to have you in the Knight Hennessy program. And um, which for those who don't know, Bob and Dottie are very big supporters of that program. And of, it's now, I think, the largest scholarship program in the world, including the Rhodes Scholarship, which you may have heard about. Um, so we are, we're thrilled to have you going off to that, Emma. So bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you for your words. <laughs> Wonderful. And now we will move on to our next. And Miss Abby, who's also showing a variety of hairstyles in that, which is great fun. <laughs> so Abby, yeah. take it away. Um, so kind of similar to what Anella said, um, I think what one memory that like stood out specifically for me was actually um when I had just come back from my study abroad and the guest house had just been renovated um, on the, com uh, the compound on Main for Thanksgiving. And I was rooming with Anela actually. And I remember just like coming back and that entire night, keeping in mind that Anela gets up really early um, in the morning. Uh, but that entire night, I just remember like we spoke about just like, my experiences on my study abroad and I remember I was going through just a lot of like not really necessarily struggles but just a lot of emotions at the time um and I just felt like at that moment it felt like I was really integrated into Dartmouth and not only like Dartmouth's like life and everything but also as a King Scholar because just like the things I was able to talk to Anella about and just like waking up the next morning and the helping uh, Dottie cook um, it was just like a very heartwarming experience. And that also just like leads me into like this program in general, because like, I feel like everyone who knows me, like all my friend, the daddy's here, like I never ever like wanted to leave Jamaica. I feel like that was not necessarily, it was a, it was a very hard decision, but I don't know, I feel like I had such a, like I already had a plan for my life and this kind of just fell in my lap somehow. And just the grace of Bob and Dottie make it, made it so much easier to honestly make the best decision of my life. Uh, I think about just like where I would be having not made this decision. Um, and I know I talked to Tony about this, like The Flash is my, <laughs> the Flash is my favorite TV show. And I don't know if some of you are familiar with it, but there's this like very pivotal moment that happens in one of the comics that's called Flashpoint. And basically like he runs back in time 
and saved his mom, which kind of sets off a chain of events in the future. And just one of the repercussions of that is, you know, he ends up like not meeting like the woman he loves. And when he ends up meeting her later in life, she basically says like, you know, the moment she met him, it just felt like a hole that has had been there, like just closed somehow. And like every time I try to imagine just like what my life would have been like if I had made this decision, it's hard not to imagine that like it would be like there's just like some hole uh, and I'm going to cry <laughs> that there's just like some hole there and I hate crying. <laughs> but it's so true because there's so many things like I got to do as a King Scholar that I would have never ever had the opportunity to do. Had I not, had I not made, like, like not, just made that one split second decision. And even like people who know me, like I love Jamaica so much. And even Italy, like fast became one of my favorite places in this world. And I just think about like, the people I've met that I love so much just not having them there in my life is just like something at this point I can't imagine and again like just the King Scholarship program itself how it was marketed just made it so much easier for me to like make this decision and be so happy and grateful for everything but anyway <laughs> fast forward from that um Yes, and this is the first time all of you would have seen me cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, my plans, I got accepted into a few of my grad schools. Uh, right now I'm leaning towards University of Glasgow, um, University of Leeds, and University of St. Andrews. To be honest, I have no idea <laughs> which one I'm going to choose. <laughs> But I still have time, and I think that's a that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so right now I'm basically looking into funding and everything that's good and everything. Um, yeah, I don't know if like if if worse comes to worse, and I don't even think this is a bad thing. I'll probably just like take a gap here, um, do some research, work a little bit, and apply for a lot of like Jamaican scholarships. Um, but yeah, those are my plans right now. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Miss Abigail. Delightful. And I think for those who don't know, um, Abby always had a deep passion for math. Um, she's also flirted with computer science. And now there's just, just this other piece of her too, of philosophy. And she has this just deep intellectual curiosity about it. She loves physics. Um, she has a lot, a lot of intellectual interest. And, you know, in her internship, she was with the World Justice Project out in DC. She um, did it and a really interesting internship with a web-based radio program to support immigrants in Rome. Um, and as you know, Italy is from now, from what she said, is one of her favorite places. Um, she. Abby, you have such an engaging humor and, and a calm wisdom, right? There's just such sort of serenity and particularly maybe with tears um, and, and your intellectual passions. It's just such a wonderful mix. And I think you are going to change the world, I think at that intersection actually of math and philosophy that I don't think you're not just numbers, even though you said you were your first year at Dartmouth, um, there's such humanity there too. And I'm, I just can't wait to see what that actually looks like. So bravo, and we're happy to help you with your really tough problem of having all these graduate schools that want you. So. Wonderful. All right, Caroline, let's hear from you. Um, yeah, so my name is Caroline, like you've been told. My most favorite memory is a King's Scholar. I have a lot of them, but I think the most amazing one was um, spending time with the Kings during Thanksgiving and just taking a walk and taking photos on Goose Rock, Goose Rock Beach in Maine. And I think another most amazing memory was also like during this time, we went to a leadership training at the World Bank 
and we met president, the former Dartmouth president, and just a bunch of Dartmouth alumni. And all of a sudden, we started singing the Dartmouth anthem, the Greenwich of New Hampshire, and it just felt so nice, like looking that, looking at it, that we're sitting like in the capital of the U.S. and in the World Bank, which is an institution that changes things. And there are Dartmouth people. Like we already had a family, and I felt so privileged to go to Dartmouth that even in like going into such a powerful institution, we had a huge number of Dartmouth alumni that were supporting us, and just having that new family, new network was very affirming to know that. I belong to a network of really amazing, accomplished people. And um, the other aspect of my, uh, regarding the influence of the King Leadership Scholarship Program to my uh, intellectual and personal interest, I think I would just say the King Program sort of catapulted me or just like, it sort of cut down all the many steps that I had to go to to get into my passion. It just like put me right there like it was just like instant i was there and i was already doing what i was interested in and just sort of learning about human development in my coursework at dartmouth and poverty alleviation and having the theory being grounded in praxis through the king funded internships and um the opportunity to talk to industry experts ar around the complexities of alleviating poverty helped me to ground my knowledge into more practical base and affirmed me enough i was really interested in in alleviating poverty and just empowerment in general and even in more special way it's it sort of narrowed my interest to the point that i knew i'm interested in women i'm interested in gender empowerment and not just women i'm interested in african rural women who are quite frankly at the bottom of the pyramid and um, I'm very excited to continue working on that through um, my next plans, which are a bunch of internships and also my low band fellowship in Liberia with the Center for Women Land Rights, and also um, still coming back to Dartmouth, hopefully to do my to write my thesis, which was mainly on articulating the interest of the African rural women and giving them the space in academia and in just different platforms where they've been forgotten and just making their voice hard. And I would like to say, well, first, huge applause for you. And to also for folks who don't know, she received the AAAS, the African and African American Studies Department's um, award for the top thesis this year for that work she just referred to. So really, really remarkable work. And, you know, for Caroline, who, who majored in AAAS, but also had geography as a real focus, um, again, she went all over the world, as so many of our students did for her internships, whether it was the World Justice Project down in, in um, D.C., like, like also with Abby, um, working with the Legal Innovation Power Hub back in Nairobi, doing an internship working with underserved folks in Vietnam. Um, you know, you, you are such a wonderful combination, Caroline, of, of sort of the spontaneous energy, brilliantly creative in what you do. Um, and then just, again, this kind of singularly focused, fierce commitment to sort of global social justice, particularly, I think, for women. And as you said, for rural women, um, you know, I, I think the way you're going to change the world is actually one woman at a time and one woman's power at a time. And you, I know, have an interest in big organizations and the World Bank and the UN. And I think that's fantastic. And I what I also love, though, is that you are so focused on individuals as well. And, and that combination of the big, the forest, and also the trees, that's what it's all about, um, is, is a delightful one. So we can't wait to see what's next. So big shout out to Caroline. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> and then we have Mr. Gustavo, who- Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, yeah, can, you, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right, so the, the first question was about the, the, what was the first? Oh, the memory, right? I think that the, I think I'll miss the Thanksgivings too. Um, if I think of the program, I'll think that I'll think that I'll, I'll miss the Thanksgiving so much. I'll miss the conversations with uh, Bob. I'll miss uh, Dottie's coffee cake. I'll miss just the um, Q 
chaotic familiarity and lack of organization in the mornings and, you know, just helping uh, Dottie cook and um, set up the, setting up the tables and just this um, generously opening up uh, their homes, you know, the families uh, to me. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, when I think of the impact that the King Scholars Program has, has, has had in my um, uh, life at Dartmouth, I think about all the things that I was able, that I wouldn't have been able to do had it not been for the program, including, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the encouragement, like the encouragement for, for my research and all that. And one thing and, uh, that, I, that I wanted to highlight to is that coming into, uh, as a like young Gustavo coming into Dartmouth, wanting to study uh, sociology, thinking about, you know, like reading like about social issues and stuff like that. I, I really questioned, oftentimes I would question my place uh, coming into a program like this, right? Um, and wanting to study sociology and all that. Um, but one thing, one thing, um, but, but, but what I, but what I learned coming into here all the time, it was the encouragement for me to stick to who I was and stick to what mattered to me. And then after knowing who I was and after knowing what mattered to me, uh, then I can figure out on my own, uh, my, what the path that I need to take is to tackle these goals that we all share in common, right? So I want to thank the, whole pro the program as a whole for uh, always encouraging me not to lose sight of uh, what is it that I believed in, what, it, what was important to me, and how is it that I saw myself uh, doing the, the, the things that I, that I want to do, right? So I want to thank the program for that. And the question about the, where I'm going in the future. So it was, it is through this encouragement that you know I felt confident enough to continue studying things that matter to me, doing doing community doing community based uh, research in my own community where I come from, studying domestic workers, and uh, because of that, I'm going to continue um, in a, an academic uh, path in sociology, um, studying these these issues. Uh, and lastly, just one, one more thing before I go, I just want to thank um, like each of the program, the, the people in the program uh, uh, individually. I want to thank Jay for, for always been, being a uh, great support and always uh, encouraging me to pursue uh, my goals. Um, I want to thank uh, Tony for the amazing conversations that I'll miss so much and for just being you know just uh feeling like uh like a friend of um and being a friend to me I want to thank uh Bev for just being this amazing soul and for checking up on me sending the messages like on Facebook checking it to see how I am sharing the articles thank you for each article Bev uh, I want to thank, of course, Bob and Dottie for being these amazing, amazing people and for changing, for touching so many people's lives, including mine. And the work that you do is truly transformative. Also, uh, Peter and Amy, who have, I've, I haven't had the chance to interact as much as these other people, but thank you so much for uh, the work that you've been doing. It's not going unnoticed. Um, and also, I want to say that I just want to say that, like, it, it is an honor to be graduating with these people. Just hearing you guys talk, I just feel like, wow, it is so it is so uh, humbling to me to be graduating with you, and I feel so honored to be um, to be in the same like list with you guys. Just that it's it's something that's incredible to me, and also to the the students who are uh, staying. Um, uh, I just want to uh, let you know that I'll miss you, but that you know that you can always reach out to me. And please reach out to me if you want to talk about graduate school, if you want to talk about whatever else, if you need, a, if you need uh, some connection to something, uh, please uh, reach out to me. Um, 
and yeah, it is it is crazy to think that that I'm stepping away from Dartmouth, but I'm not certainly not stepping away from from this program. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for setting all this. Just I'm just like filled with gratitude here. I need to stop talking to you. <laughs> no, you don't. Never stop talking. <laughs> Um, thank you, Gustavo, and, and he will, I, I have to say a shout out, since it's one of my alma maters, that he didn't mention he'll be at Brown University doing his PhD in sociology, and so we're delighted to have you close by, at least, two and a half hours away. Um, Gustavo, and, it, and as you can imagine, his, his major is sociology, and he also received his department's award for top thesis, um, and also he and Anna share the distinction of having the most citations for classes at Dartmouth of any, um, of any students I've ever known. By the way, citations are bad in the world, I guess, like traffic citations. <laughs> Dartmouth citations are very good. They mean someone has done work that the professor needs to say something extra about it. Um, I don't think I received a single one as a student at Dartmouth, and they each had almost double digits. So, um, but you know, Gustavo did all sorts of work like others around the world in the Dominican Republic. He did dissertation research in Brazil. He worked actually on campus doing research on racial disparities, which is incredibly relevant these days as always. Um, Gustavo, you have this wonderful combination of being fiercely intellectual, right? Um, and also, not but, and um, deeply empathetic, right? And you are so other focused. Another student in the program tried to capture how he thought about the world and he said, if I have half a, glass, half a glass of water, I want you to have that half rather than me to drink it. And I think that's how I think of you as well, Gustavo. Um, and, you know, I, yes, I think you're going to change the world for domestic laborers in Brazil. Um, but I actually think you're going to change it through the students that you teach. Um, I suspect you're going to be at a higher education institution or wherever you are and that you were gonna change the way your students see the world, which will therefore change the world. So um, we can't wait to hear what's next. And um, Gustavo is gonna be with us for a couple of weeks doing work specifically to help us even better welcome our 24s, who are also incredibly exciting and coming from around the world. And he's helping us to improve what we do with that and to just have our best foot forward. So thank you for that, Gustavo, and we all celebrate you. Thank you, friend. And last, but certainly not least, we have Linford, who also was able to take some time away to focus on some really interesting um, passions of his. And Linford, we turn the floor over to you. And thank you for finding a place with Wi-Fi. I know it's a real challenge for you. No, thank you very much, Jay. Um, yeah, so, so where to start? Uh, um, yeah, no, I guess I, guess I just want to thank everyone um, for this opportunity, I think, um, and what it has meant for me, um, and which, which I will touch upon when I answer the second prompt. Um, the memory that I guess comes to me, I was trying to think of a memory. Um, it was, it was kind of hard, actually, <laughs> um, but I did manage to get something. Um, and I remember one of the memories that I saw was, um, was trying to get to Rwanda, and I was trying to go see Eric, and I couldn't, I lost touch with Eric, <laughs> um, and I couldn't get a hold of him. Um, so I got a hold of Patrick, um, and I ended up going to sleep at Patrick's place, because Patrick was also in Rwanda. Um, and then it happened that on my second day in Rwanda, I was with Patrick, and we were just walking around Kigali. I was showing me places, and we met Eric and his brother. Um, randomly, we just bumped into Eric, <laughs> uh, and I guess I, I remember that a lot, and it's tied up to other memories that I remember as well. Um, like in Rwanda, I I rode a motorbike for the first time. I was very scared of doing it, but because it's the culture there, uh, Patrick was like, "Yo, you're gonna walk." Uh, <laughs> so and and I did that, and I guess. It ties into the other other memories that I think of in in the sense of I guess how I've connected with um, some of the scholars that I've, uh, I've I've met some of the scholars um, some of them I have really benefited in the in the sense of having mentors having brothers um, having people that I really really relate to um, and I really I think I valued that with the with the King scholar I remember. My freshman year, we're going to 
um, to Maine for Thanksgiving. Uh, and we're in the bus, it was, and the freshmen were just myself, uh, Akosa, uh, Patrick, and, and John. Um, and we we're just there talking about our freshman experience and we we're talking about girls. Um, <laughs> and just like, you know, the struggles that we had, but it was very, it, was, it felt very good to have people that I could talk to um you know just like coming into darkness because that was very hard to you know like who do i who do i know how do i connect with them um but it just like felt natural connecting with those guys um and you know on the second one on how the the king's college program has uh changed my trajectory or affected my trajectory uh it's 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 definitely been a huge part of my <laughs> of my college career. I cannot talk about, you know, being an undergrad and not talk about uh, being a King's Scholar because it's very, it's very tied together uh, in the sense that I think I definitely am very grateful and am humbled for the opportunity of like the privilege that I think I got, um, the privilege to, to have flexibility, I think, because I think, you know, I haven't finished yet, um, but I'm a 19 and, you know, it's taken me a lot of time, I think, to figure out, you know, exactly what is it that I want to do, uh, what is it that I'm good at, how is it, how do I want to make an impact in the world, um, and and I think, you know, there are some students who need time, uh, and but sometimes, you know, we don't have the privilege to of that time, you know, like if you have to know what you want, you have to do it. There's no time to try something out and fail and there's not that. But and I think the King Scholarship has definitely given me that flexibility to say, um, I'm going to I'm going to work in I'm going to go I'm gonna I'm going to go to India uh to work for a non profit, right? Uh that was through the King Scholarship. Um and not because, you know, my people that I was studying with were going to work for Facebook, but I was going to work for a non profit in, in India. Um, and not feel that pressure to do what everyone else was doing, but to just do different things in an effort to sort of like figure out uh, who I am and what is it that I want to do. Um, so it's definitely changed my trajectory. And, you know, now I'm in a position where I think, you know, I know how I want to you know, like how I want to have an impact in the world. You know, I have a better sense. I think it's another question, but I have a better sense of that. Um, I remember in the fall, um, this was during homecoming, I think, um, Bob, Bob and Dorothy were there and Amy said to me, you know, think about, you know, when you're finished, think about a space or what is it that you'd rather be doing, right? Before you start like looking for jobs and everything, what is it that you'd rather be doing? Um, and at that point, I remember, I don't know if the staff remembers because he was sitting next to me, but I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, I, I'll think about that because I, I couldn't answer it and I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, but now I can say, you know what? Yeah, I know, I know the things that I want to be doing when I finish. <laughs> um, so that was a conversation that I had in a, in a King's College setting. I remember Bob talking about change and this was my freshman year. Thanksgiving, and I think it was myself and Patrick or John, and we were sitting down and listening to um, to Bob, and he was talking about uh, think about you know the way that the world is changing, um, understand that. And at that time, I was a freshman, so I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, change, but <laughs> um, I didn't really, I think, understand what he was saying, you know. But that, you know, a few years after that, and then I went to India, and then I. Did, like the past and everything and I really was touched by that philosophy but what was more interesting was the change that Bob had told me before was the exact same thing that, that the people they were talking about just how the world is constantly changing um, and you know it's something that I now think about you know just like you know things are changing very fast but how do you how do you prepare yourself for those changes um, and I think that, you know, when I mentioned the privilege, you know, I was coming from, and I think, you know, a lot of other scholars can relate to this, I was coming from a family that, you know, isn't well off. Um, so the pressure for me was, 
you know, I want to do something for my family, but at the same time, I want to do something for myself. So mm -hmm. if I wasn't a King Scholar, I think I would have gone into Dartmouth, done maybe an engineering degree with the hope of getting a job, and then that's it, I'm doing that for my family, right? But I know that that would not have been enough for me because I also have a lot of other interests and a lot of other things that I think I'm good at. Um, but, you know, coming into Dartmouth and the first conversations that we we're having, meeting the other scholars where, you know, this is the world, this is how the world works, how do you want to make an impact? It got me thinking more about myself, right? Because if I'm just going to try to get a job after I graduate, it's going to be hard for me, I think, to make an impact if I don't really understand what is it that, who is Lenford, pretty much, you know. So it got me thinking about who I was as a person um, in order to make that impact that I want to have. And, you know, sort of like balancing, navigating that tough line between expectations of family and what Lenford wants is something that I've needed time to to come to a place where I could balance that. And I don't think if I was not, I think if I wasn't a King Scholar, I would not have been able to get to the place where I'm at now um, because I would not have had the time to, you know, even, I think even taking, taking time away, uh, the internships that I've done, all of that has just been, I think have helped me to figure out the things that I want to do. And I think those things would not have happened if I wasn't a King Scholar um, and the privilege that comes with it. So I'm definitely grateful for that. Um, I think something that I always think about, especially now that I'm home, you know, and I'm with the people that I grew up with, it's always, you know, how can you make it so that these other people as well have a privilege like that, you know, have the opportunities to figure out who they are and what they want to do, you know, um, the opportunity to make mistakes and come back from those mistakes because a lot of the times, like if you make a mistake, there's no coming back, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful. And where do I see myself this coming year? Um, so I, you know, I'm not done yet. I still have two more terms to go uh, because you know, my, my college career has just been <laughs> um, a lot of ups and downs, but I'm not done yet. So I have two more terms. Uh, which I'm excited about because, you know, I'm at a place where I know exactly what I want to do. So everything that I'm doing now is sort of like aligned with that thing. Uh, so it's just trying to finish the summer strong, trying to finish the fall strong. Um, and, you know, I guess when I'm saying I know what I want to do, it feels very vague. It's just like, oh, what is it that Linkford knows that he wants to do? Um, but <laughs> So, yeah, I, you know, I realized that I think from doing computer science, I sort of like fallen into uh, wanting to do product design um, because I like figuring out how things work and how can you create new systems? How can you do things differently? Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to get into, more product design, business development. And I like that I'm here at home because I get to sort of like experiment, do prototypes for different business ideas that I have and fail. And one thing that I'm working on right now is I'm trying to change the way groceries are bought in Arare, which is the city that I stay at. Um, and the inspiration from that started with when the whole COVID uh, thing started. Um, and that's something that I'm trying to address in this uh, in Arare. Um, but it's, it's if I'm trying to start it, I'm trying to make a business out of it. But, you know, I have the luxury of, oh, I can fail and say, yeah, I was doing this as a case study um, because I'm a product designer. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, so that's, that's how the year is looking for me. Um, but again, thank you so much to everyone that I, you know, that's part of the program. Jay, uh, I remember those hugs in uh, FFB. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Bev, I remember you telling me about um, finding a balance between what I want and, you know, what I have to do, you know. Uh, last year, I did something that I stuck with. Uh, Tony, um, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> You've helped me so much. 
Um, I remember forgetting keys and going back, and, and you had to like take me back to get them. Um, Bob and Jockey, thank you so much for, for the generosity. Um, it, it means a lot. Uh, and yeah, Jackie, she's not here, but I, yeah, I appreciate it so much. Um, and to all the other scholars, I've definitely learned a lot. So Caroline, you know, it's, it's an inspiration. Um, you know, like, yeah, Anila, it's, it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot, you know, um, but I'm grateful and I, I know that this is not the end. This is the beginning of just like this network, this connection and um, trying to make the world a better place. Thank you, Linford. How wonderfully said and such learning that you've had. Um, for those who don't know, Linford mentioned computer science and he is, he's so gifted at it. Um, he's worked on internships in, with computers in Nigeria. He's done career development applications in Zimbabwe. Um, he referred to being in India, working with an educational um, organization there. Such, Linford, as much as any student I've ever worked with, you are open to possibilities and open to ways that you want to change. And I think that is, that's so powerful. Um, you clearly are deeply charismatic and I think you draw people to you. And I think that part of what does that is your openness and your genuine, genuine willingness to change and to, and to see that there was a administrator at Dartmouth maybe 60 years ago who said the two most important questions you can ask as an undergraduate, and I would say as a 51 year old, probably two, is who am I and who ought I be, right? And those are powerful questions. And I think you have engaged with them so authentically, right? And who do I want to be? And so when I think of how you will change the world, I, I actually think that you're gonna change the world in some way or many, many ways that are needed at the time that we can't even predict right now. Because I think you are a learner and you are adaptable and flexible and you are gonna find what needs to happen, whether it's groceries or it's helping young people um, who may be in similar places to how you describe yourself a while ago um, before coming to Dartmouth where you could have gone a couple of different ways and you went a way that is gonna take advantage of your talents and strengths and I bet you will help young people do that as well. So we are so proud of you, Linford. So big round from everybody. Bravo. Thank you, Tony. And, and I just also wanna welcome Sayuri Magnabosco, who's one of our um, King Scholars from Brazil, 21, now a senior, I guess. And I think David Mina is also on the phone, who's a wonderful um, FICEP student and friend of many. So welcome to you both. Um, so we're now gonna hear from um, literally the people with whom, without whom this would not be possible, as they often say, um, and the people whose home has been brought up so often by people thinking about, by our students talking about their favorite memories. So let's turn it over to Bob and Dottie who wanted to, just add some other pieces to the video they shared at the beginning. So, Bob and Dottie. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. You're all my friends. Do you know that? I don't want to ever lose track of you. You know, I send Valentine's once a year. So I need to be sure to have your new address. And I just want to say that Dartmouth has done a phenomenal job for us. And Bob Lasser and Phil Hammond, uh, we're up to how many graduates do we have? I think 11 now. We're 11, 11, that's right. Okay, and so, uh, and we're very excited, you know, we don't know, we're anxious about what the future holds for all of us as far as traveling, sure. but um, I'm still riding a bicycle, I'm still walking the beach, and I'm still in love with Bob. <laughs> Aren't I lucky, huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. I want to just uh, briefly conclude from our perspective. Uh, John Sloan Dickey was president when I was there. That was a few years ago. I don't know if you, anybody can picture what 1957, which was my graduating year. That, that's probably sort of like ancient history for you guys. Um, but he had, he, I learned he had two objectives for his students. One was to be a lifelong learner. And I couldn't encourage all of you to stay with that thought. 
don't think, well, I've done my education. Every day, learn something new. And I, I love the comments that we had earlier about uh, focus, my focus on fundamental change forces. And, and that's part of the way I keep learning every, every day. And the other uh, that we were encouraged to be in those, and again, we're talking back in the 1950s, was to be global citizens. Well, oh my gosh, when I think about what has taken place in the United States and where we then move after Dartmouth uh, went to Stanford, settled in, in Silicon Valley and the technology impact and how this world is shrinking every day. And if you think about uh, the virus and the pandemic, is, is, to me it underscores geographical boundaries may exist, but the things that take place don't have a clue about geographical boundaries. And the pandemic is, is a, a underscoring of, of that. And I'd say my number one issue personally at this stage is climate change, which knows no geographical, because it's a global issue that needs to be solved. And I'm determined to do my best to focus my attention on that as a problem that, that has solutions and we've got to get to the point where that takes place. In any case, I just, I'm so excited about all of you and what you can do to make this world a better place. And I know each one of you are going to do your part in, in making that happen. So God bless you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that people would give a standing ovation if you could tell that it was one, I'm sure. Um, so thank you, Bob and Dottie, so, so much. Um, we're we're going to take an opportunity now, and this is pretty informal. It's just if there's anybody who has not had a chance to speak um, who would like to say something, nobody should feel any obligation to. But if you would like to, um, I think what we're going to try to do, and I know I have a couple screens, so it'll be a little difficult. But if you would like to say something, you just raise your hand or do the little icon, raise your hand, or just send a chat um, out saying that you'd like to say something. Um, we are welcome to have anybody. Um, join in who'd like to say something. So we'll, we'll open the floor for a little bit here. Let's see. I'm slipping screen. Someone needs to be first. Is that Amala? Please. Yes, it's Amala. I just wanted to say that I am very grateful for everyone here for helping Anela throughout her Dartmouth journey. Bob and Dottie, which I had privilege to meet, and to you, Jay, I met also you. And I met Gustavo, <laughs> and I saw Abby, <laughs> and I saw Crazy, <laughs> and all the rest of you, Anela, always talked about you so much. So I almost feel like I know you guys. <clears throat> and I just wanted to wish you all the luck in the world, and to wish you success and health. And that's about it. And thank you once again, Bob and Dottie, for everything. And Jay. And thank you so much, Amala. And I have to say, of my many places in the world that I care about, Bosnia is one of them. And I've had the opportunity to go a couple of times. And I know how your life, Amala, was, was altered by, by the wars and by those incredibly complex times. And I know that you had to give up. Um, some of your own hopes for your own life and where things were going. And you have done such an amazing job of, of, of focusing your energies on your daughter and what she's doing. And I, I have such respect for that. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I always love to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sayuri, I think, would like to say something. Yeah, uh, I would like to say congratulations to all the 20s that are graduating right now. I'm very happy that I had the privilege to meet you all. Uh, and there is one special person that is graduating this year, that is Gustavo, that is the King Scholar of this year that I think I got most, most close to. Uh, I just wanted to say, Gustavo, that you're an amazing person and I'm very, very proud of everything that you've accomplished. For me, you're just an inspiration and I'm so happy that I'm, I get to participate in all the celebrations with you. And I just wanted you to know that I'll be here cheering you up and being happy with like all your successes, no matter how small they are. Wonderful. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Sayuri. 
and welcome to being a senior yourself. Anybody else who would like to speak? I think I see Chio. And then the Kwesi after. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations, guys. I'm so proud of you. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that when I first came to Dartmouth, I wasn't sure about how exactly I was going to change the world. <laughs> and I was very confused. But then every time we met and you talked about your thesis, your research, your internships, everything you've done, all the things you've done was very, very inspirational for me. And I just wanted to thank you for that, for your like really, your truly <laughs> re, um, role models. And it's going to be so weird not having you next year. And I'm going to miss you so much. And thank you so much for being who you are. <laughs> That's wonderfully put, Chio. Thank you. I think a Kwesi, were you going to say something? Whoop. There he is. I just got up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like whatever that I say right now will be an understatement of um, how much each and every one of you have really impacted me in your own unique ways. Um, I think, like, one of the first people that I met on campus when I came as a freshman was um, Caroline. I remember her vividly riding her bike and like the energy and then the welcoming spirit that she she um, did was like something that she carried through the entire time that I had with um, her here. Like every time I meet her, she's such a, a rejuvenating spirit and like that has really helped me keep going. Um, the same thing applies to Anela, the same thing applies to um, Abby Cameron, the same thing applies to Linford. Um, I, I remember like having a lot of um, conversations with Anela um, about energy and like how, how she goes about um, doing her stuff on campus and like that really impacted me immensely, like her work ethic, everything. Um, I remember being in class with, with Abigail Cameron, like the same thing. And like each and every one of you are very hardworking. Gustavo, like, is always smiling at me. And like, although I, 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 I never really said that I really appreciated that to your face, I, I just want you to know that like you really helped me as well. Like, I don't really say that much, but like those small kind gestures actually like improve my day every time I see these people. And I'm really glad that like, I got to meet them. And I really wish that whatever that you'll be doing will be very successful. And then in the future, we get to meet again. Remember all that we've been through, the memories that we form and laugh about it. So thank you, everyone. And congrats. Thank you, Akwesi. I wish I could hug people. Yeah, no kidding. Hug you too. It's, it's easier, at least on the screen, where you literally can't hug them. In person, it's harder to stop. Yeah. Who else would like to speak? Switch screen to make sure. I think I want to say something. Please. Um, so for me, I actually, I actually forgot about the current students. And I remember when the first class of faith and Sherry and um, the, the team when they graduated, I was really, it really struck me like they were already good and it was very emotional for me because I felt like I was all alone once we were gone. And I'm sure for some of you, it may feel like that, but as Gustavo said, we may be physically out of Dartmouth. Well, for some of us, I'll be back very soon, but for the others, but we, we are behind you, we are there to support you. We've gone through the journey. You don't have to figure out anything because we've already done it. You can always reach out to us. We'll stay connected forever, King Scholars and forever, Dartmouth family. And please reach out to us. Don't, don't feel like you're alone. We've done it. We've gone through the stress of the thesis and everything and figuring out things. And I promise we'll be there to help you through like our elders have always done it for us. Mm. Wonderful, Caroline. That captures it perfectly. 
I think Peter was going to say something he'd like to say. Oh, and then maybe we'll bring in Lewis after that. And then Patrick. Yes. I just wanted to say one more quick note. Um, and this goes to Abby. Um, Abby, I will miss you so much. Um, I don't think I had a student who came into the Dickey Center more than Abby. And whether that be the free food that we always had at the Dickey Center or just really wanted to talk about literally anything, I really appreciated your time and effort you put into the Dickey Center. Um, Abby was a member of the Great Issue Scholars Program that we have at the Dickey Center and her commitment and dedication and just help with that program really um, helped me run the program. And I want to say thank you, Abby. I will always be here for you and look forward to hearing about what you do in the future. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. And Lewis. Lewis, and welcome to being a senior yourself now. Oh, uh, yeah, it moves so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, speaking of seniors now, Patrick, would you, I think you'd like to say something. Yes, hello, everyone. Um, so I can't put on my camera right now, but I'll speak. Hope you can hear me. Um, yes, uh, so uh, I would like to say congratulations to our graduates. I. Uh, I think like it's been noted how it is a really unique group of people um, and uh, each one each one of them sort of have have um, like a unique way they contribute they contributed to the King scholars community to Dartmouth community and to you know individual lives. And I, I think I wanted to highlight, at least from my point of view, um, what each one, what I noticed about each one and hope that, you know, they keep adding to those things. Um, I think Abby is uh, sort of the Hadrovio spirit, like a lot of energy, like for the times at least we interacted, um, which I think like uh, people catch, you know, feed can um gain from or feed off of and um that's like a great person to be around uh gustavo i think uh, jay mentioned it like empathy um and dedication to various communities i uh have a lot of respect for gustavo i i think I, i've observed from afar like as you guys did a lot of work to create like a brazilian community and sort of a lot of uh, um, work to kind of create communities for people who, uh, you know, to different levels didn't feel like they have a community on that campus. And I think that's something like a great contribution and I hope, you know, maintain that. Um, Anela, I think uh, I respect uh, her focus and dedication. I think like when she came in um, early on, talking about energy and all this work she'd done and uh, also seeing her, you know, throughout uh, the past four years, just keep doing that work and improving on it. I think that's something to be admired and also be inspired by. Um, and Linford, uh, he's a brother to me. I, I think I'm glad to be in the same class and the same cohort with him. Um, and I like his openness to the world. I think Jay mentioned it as well. Uh, kind of willingness to engage and uh, willingness to, um, you know, you can sit down and talk about things and it's okay to change and how that change happens. And uh, so I am glad that, to know 
you Linford and uh, um, I'm glad for all of you. Oh no. Uh, can you hear us, Patrick? I, I'd just like to have everybody take a moment who's not a student and just imagine doing your online classes at Dartmouth with this kind of connection possibilities and what happens. And, you know, we Linford getting solar power to get himself electricity so that he could have a hotspot so he could actually have Wi-Fi. So um, if we don't get you back, Patrick, we, we'd love hearing. Uh, I am. Oh. Yay. Oh. Wait, where did you guys lose me? I thought oh my when you God. said I'm Patrick. No, I'm kidding. We we lost you. Yeah. I think when you were talking about Linford. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am back. Yeah, so I think on Linford they said that uh, one he's uh, he's been a brother to me like since the first time we met at Dartmouth, and uh, and uh, I am glad that we came in the same cohort of King Scholars, and also. I appreciate his openness to the world and openness, you know, willingness to engage with change, um, which is also some a kind of energy that gives other people freedom to also engage with whatever change they they need to go through in their lives. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, and then I, I would say to everyone, go forth and conquer and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Patrick. Wonderful to hear from you. Yeah, you're welcome. And Linford, did I see that you wanted to say something as well? And then Gustavo? I feel like, oh, yes, yes. Uh, I do want to say something. Um, uh, yeah, so Caroline was talking about how, uh, I guess, to the younger classes that you know always reach out to us. Um, I think one thing that I've definitely benefited from is reaching out to Eric um, and just asking him about, you know, his transition, what is he doing in the U.S., how has he managed to stay in the U.S. Um, so, Eric. yeah, just, just reach out because um, I think, you know, part of there's this gap between uh, the students that are at Dartmouth and the students that have left. Um, like there isn't much communication in terms of, you know, that transition. So yeah, feel free, just be like, yo, Linford, let's have a call. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out A, B, C, D, you know, um, I'll be definitely be happy to, to chat with you guys about that. Wonderful, thank you. And I think Gustavo, you were gonna say something? Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say something briefly to the underclassmen. Um, so, because I keep thinking of myself, um, like seeing people in this position when I was like in uh, younger uh, years at Dartmouth and uh, especially my freshman year and to some extent my sophomore year, to some extent my junior year as well, at times I really question that I would be graduating right now. So at times I was really worried that um, I wasn't going to be able to make it. Um, and if this is something that you think about, if you're worried uh, about if these are things that you, that you question yourself, know that no matter what, you belong here, you belong to this college, you belong to this program, and you are valuable. And your value doesn't depend on your grades. Your value doesn't depend on the extracurriculars you, you have. Uh, your value doesn't depend on any of that. Your value uh, depends only in your in your value as a person, right? And but other than you being a person, each of you, each of you, is so incredible and so brilliant, so brilliant. So never lo lose track of that, right? And you deserve to be here. Uh, this this place is a better place because you're here. And uh, as other people have have said. Uh, reach out to your mentors too, right? Uh, and always be compassionate with yourself. Um, so I just, I just, uh, that, that's just like the message. And also thanks everybody for the like wonderful messages. Thank you, I, I love I loved hearing that. Wonderful. And I think Sirath, you were going to say something, I believe. Yes, yes. Um, hi again. Um, 
I just wanted to congratulate everybody again, um, like I did in the beginning. Um, it's been really, um, been really inspiring and sometimes a little emotional to, to be a part of this and listen to all of you and your journey. Um, and I feel very pleased to have witnessed some of your evolution. Um, obviously, I, was, I wasn't on, on campus after freshman year, um, but seeing you um, and remembering you know, you as freshmen, I mean, you were all, all already very impressive, um, but you're even more impressive and inspiring now. Um, so thank you, thank you for uh, doing all that you've done and for being so inspiring and resilient. I can think of so many examples of, from freshman year and then the times when we have connected uh, you know, in the last few years that I've been away um, of just moments of inspiration, moments of heart to heart connection, moments of fun, um, moments, of, moments of joy, moments of bonding, um, everything from you know, Thanksgiving at Bob and Dottie's to uh, when I was visiting, I think Gustavo and I got together. Um, and yeah, it's just been really beautiful and I'm being reminded of how grateful I am to be a part of this community and to resume being an active part of this community, hopefully in the fall. Um, and I want to thank everybody here who has supported these graduates because it's not, nobody does it on their own. Um, especially Bob and Dottie for founding and funding and sustaining and supporting this program and all of us. Um, and Jay for all of your work and your inimitable um, support to all of us, um, you know, as graduates and students and everybody else. Um, so yeah, just want to say thank you and give me a lot of joy to be up here. Uh, and thank you for doing this before me, actually, because now I have more mentors too, <laughs> to look up to. So yeah, wonderful. Thank you for, for doing this, uh, Jay, for, for the class. And I wish you all Godspeed. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much, Sirath. It's great to see you. And I want to give a shout out to Abby's dad, who is, is who says hello to everybody, but is out of the shot. And also um, Patrick just wrote, in case you're not seeing the chat, that he, he just had neglected to mention Caroline, whom he loves and just appreciates how much she used her voice at Dartmouth with such confidence. He wants you to keep shining, Caroline. Um, and I think Mubi and Abby would both like to say something. So Mubi. Oh, yes, I, I wanted to say um, thank you to all, to everyone graduating and congratulations. I've had um, distinctive experiences with each person and I thought I would share it and just uh, say thanks. Um, Thank you so much, Patrick. For, for Abby, the, the first time I went to church when I came to college, I, I went with her and um, we were talking and she was asking how orientation was, how I'm settling into everything and we just kept talking and I was talking about um, FICEP orientation and, and I think the King Scholar launch that we had and she's like, oh yeah, King Scholar, I'm also a King Scholar and that that just, and I didn't know I'd, I'd been talking with her for so long and I just didn't know until, so that was a really nice um, introduction and it has just been nice having her around and, and talking to her. And uh, for for Gustavo, he always says hi from, from across the green in Foucault, in, in, in Thea School, wherever he's he, in the library, he always says hi and waves with this really nice smile and it's always uh, comforting to know that that you have someone who is always going to say say hi to you, and for for Anela, um, when we had the the dinner at at Pine in October, um, I, I think she took a bunch of pictures in her phone, and and I asked her to help me to send them to me, and so she she sent them to me, and then I I replied and said thanks, and she's like, oh yeah, um, if there's anything I could help with, please please reach out and. Um, I never reached out, but uh, she has really helped me a lot. She, like all she's she's done is just really inspiring, and just seeing the way she she carries herself and comports herself is is uh, really nice. Especially the the tips she gave us um, before leadership week that was really really helpful. And uh, for for Caroline, there was one night I was leaving the library. And I think I was going to Foucault and I don't know where she was going to, but I'm, I'm quite sure she was going somewhere else. And then I, I said hi and she just, she walked with me all the way and then went off on her own path. And that was just really nice to have someone to talk to, to that night. And what, what I 
what was really humbling was that she 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 ignored where she was going to just to just to hang out and walk out. That's uh yeah. And for for Linford, um, we had so many great conversations during leadership week, and they, he told me a lot about uh, to talk to me a lot about the willingness to to change and to adapt. And uh, he we we spoken a lot about cars and his. He has connected me to people who have similar interests, and it's just so nice to have have a have a big big brother like Linford. So I'm grateful to all of you. Congratulations, and I I wish you the very best uh, with the rest of your journeys. Thanks. Thank you, Mubi. That was wonderful. I think I see that Abby might like to say something. Uh, yes. So I know a lot of people already highlighted. It's a lot of what I wanted to say to the other like scholars and underclassmen and Bob and Dottie, of course. But I think especially for me, like Peter, Jay and Tony, like first with Peter, as you already mentioned, I felt like every day I would go and annoy Peter in the Dickey Center, especially concerning just like um, internships uh, or if I was already in Kemeny, which I'm normally, I normally am. Um, just having someone there um, was just like meant a lot and then with Tony kind of similar to the role I feel like he played with Peter it's just nice knowing that uh, there's just somebody you could talk to like I spoke to Tony about I think everything <laughs> uh, not even pertaining to the King's College but just like life in general and it's nice you know having that person there and then for Jay especially um, it's funny because I felt like I didn't go to Jay as much as I recommended other students to him. Um, so if anyone had a problem, uh, they would talk about, um, you know, what they would do during interim because they don't know, like, how they would go back home. I would say, oh, you should just talk to Jay. Like, I felt like he was always my go-to person because even outside of the King Scholarship, I know everything that he does with FICEP means so much to so many students. Uh, so yeah, Jay was definitely the person, like, I feel like I recommended every single student to, maybe a student he wasn't even familiar with, I would say, oh, just talk to Jay. So yeah, I think that's what I really wanted to do, just like highlight Jay and Tony and Peter. I feel like people were just like there no matter what, not even, you know, pertaining to the King Scholarship itself, but just, it's nice knowing that you have people in the administration who you can go and talk to. Uh, just people you know you can rely on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Abby. Wonderfully said. So as we come towards the conclusion of our ceremony, is there anybody else who would like to speak who did not get a chance? Well, Caroline, say one. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I already spoke, but I just had to say this. Um, Bob and Doty, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. I know you really know how grateful we are and I'm sure all of us will keep honoring your legacy through our different ways and through our different giftings. Jay, Tony, and Peter, thank you so much. And in a very special way, I would like to thank Jay Davis. I don't know if I would have gone through Dartmouth without you. You've been, you just, um, the times that I felt like I couldn't do it, you always told me I could. and. There's no time that you didn't have time for me, even when you were busy. You still found time to slot me in and just give me your time. And I think every student deserves a person like Jay, a person who would never tell them that they can't do it. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Thank you so much, Jay. Uh, this room is really dusty, issues with it. Um, thank you, Caroline. Um, so, I think we're about ready then to um, move to sort of the end and, and checking out my program to make sure I'm not missing anything yet. It's so wonderful to hear from all of you. And to those of you who didn't speak, we're so glad that you're here with us, friends and professors from other countries and of course the family. Um, and you know, I'll just, I'll just finish with a couple of thank yous and, and in the last little slideshow. Um, the, thank you so much to all the campus partners who work with us and, and the faculty and um, just so many people. Um, the folks like Kate who um, work behind so many different scenes to make this all happen. The people that contacted me years ago to say, 
there's this couple that are very interested in making a difference in the world and they want to, to make a gift that could make this all happen. And um, it's amazing to see where we are now. So thank you to those partners. Thank you to those families and friends um, for being there for them, for believing in these seniors' best selves and that they could be that. Um, and Bob and Dottie, you know that you are at the heart of all of this. Um, we're all on Dottie's team. Um, and we, we say thank you, but we can't say it enough. So um, we are so thrilled. Um, and I, I think our last thank you is, is to these students, um, these seniors and the ones who will be seniors someday. Um, we, we are all so enriched by being having you in our lives. Um, my, my kids certainly know that when I talked with them about, um, th this by the way is the window up there that I get hit by a Nerf gun from my son when he feels like it, that's his bedroom. Um, when they knew I was gonna be on a Zoom call with the King Scholars, they knew how important that was. Um, I think, you know, Bob and Dottie believe in people, right? They believe in individuals, they believe in programs, and um, that is what the heart of this program is, is you as individuals, and then you as a community. And I think our, our last slideshow um, is, is just a short one, but it, I think it honors that idea of community and, and the fact that we are so much more together than we are apart. Um, and so Tony, if you wanna cue that up for some last group shots of, of us all. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. So wonderful. And thank you to Tony for putting all of this together. Thank you. For being the one that I could trust would figure out how to make all of this work online. Um, Tony and I, we actually got together in person at a, at a physically distant, Bob, but not socially distant, um, distance a couple of days ago. And it was the first time I'd seen him in person in three months. We've been on Zoom pretty much all of our life together. But <laughs> Uh, it it's, feels very natural to see you sitting in that room, Tony, but thank you for all of your work in so many ways. Um, it, 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 these things, you always feel like I could just keep going because um, part of it is we don't want to say goodbye. Um, and I, I, I am reminded of a, of a little song that some will know as sort of part of the American tradition of, um, for some communities at least, of the song, This Little Light of Mine, right? That the, the idea that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That works for all of you, except you have such enormous lights, but you still sometimes, I think, um, keep them hidden a bit. And I think part of what the King Scholarship Program is trying to do is <clears throat> to have, help you understand your light, right? And to help you understand where you want to shine that light. And as Bob said, you're, you're, you are learners. And so that means that light is gonna shine in different places over these next 40, 50, 70 years, right? Um, there's a long way ahead of you to make a difference in the world and it's going to adapt. Um, but you are not learned because learned people, as somebody once said, learned people find themselves equipped for a world that no longer exists. <laughs> learners find themselves equipped for the world that is, right? And, and you are all learners and we are so much stronger with you in our community and as leaders to come. So. Um, Thank you to all of you, and we are so fortunate to have each other. We still have each other when we hit leave. That doesn't change anything. We just aren't seeing each other on the screen. So um, thank you all, and blessings to all of you. Thank, thank you. you, Jay. Thank you, everyone. It was thank so you. Nice to you guys. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye. <laughs> bicep, bicep graduation at 1 o'clock tomorrow if you want to come. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.